So what we are talking about here is really defining the goal on a piece of paper. And I do think that's important. You should write this down. And I think the process of selecting your goal, that priority, as well as defining the specificity of the verb action that you're going to pursue should be done on paper. You of course are going to think, but then you should write it out, seeing things on paper and writing them out by hand with pen or pencil really has been shown to engage neural circuitry in a way that is different than typing with your thumbs into your phone, which by the way, is a new feature of human evolution. I do believe this is the first time in human evolution that we have uh, written with our thumbs. I don't know, I don't have a time machine, I can't go back and check, but I'm willing to place a bet that that statement is correct. So the point is that writing things out is not only important, it's also the most effective way to embed knowledge in our nervous system so I highly recommend that you write things out on a piece of paper in your process of goal setting. So when we are talking about generating verb specificity about your goal, it would look like the following. So let's say I want to quote unquote, get more fit or learn conversational French or anything for that matter, gardening. Maybe I wanna build a gazebo in the backyard or a deck in the backyard. The key thing to answer is what is the major block of action that's going to be involved in pursuing that goal. So for instance, if you want to get more fit and you're going to do that primarily through running and weight training or swimming and weight training, you would want to get very specific in defining that priority goal as I'm going to run X number of miles per week, or I'm going to go to the gym three times per week to lift weights. Although I would recommend getting even more specific than that. I would recommend that you literally write down, I'm going to go to the gym three times per week for a minimum of 60 minutes where 50 minutes of that are carrying out hard work, okay? With of course, rest between sets, et cetera. Or I'm going to attend three classes per week or perhaps even just one class per week of learning conversational French. Plus I'm going to spend two hours per week of practicing say word problems or mathematical problems, whatever it is, you want to define first the priority, then you want to define the verb action that represents the bulk of effort towards that priority. So running in the case of the person who wants to get fit by running, weightlifting in the case of the person that wants to get fit by weightlifting. Although of course I highly recommend people do both resistance training and uh, cardiovascular training if indeed they want to be truly fit or in the case of language learning or learning how to code or gardening or something of that sort, to really define the verb actions involved and then to place specificity in terms of the amount of time that one is going to try to achieve each week in pursuit of that specific priority goal. Now I realize that that process itself takes a bit of time, but when you look back on the 100 year plus scientific literature of what leads to successful goal setting and pursuit, you find over and over again that those two components we've been talking about, specificity and measurability are paramount. You just simply cannot discard those from the process if you expect yourself to achieve your goals. So whether or not it's the ABC method or it's the SMART method or the SMARTER method, again, all acronyms coined not by me, but by others previous to this conversation, you're going to find elements of specificity and measurability showing up again and again. So these are key features of any protocol that you are going to use in order to try and set and achieve your goals. And I should mention that setting specific goals and clearly defining the verbs that you're going to engage in to pursue those goals and defining how long you are going to try and engage in those verbs each week to achieve those goals has significant impact on the probability of success. We're not talking about a minor effect. In fact, in the original episode I did about goal setting and pursuit, I talked about the so-called recycling study. I'm not going to describe it in a lot of detail right now, but essentially this study looked at motivating people to recycle more recyclable products in the workplace. And what they found was that when people were told what the specific goal was and what specific actions they needed to engage in were, and how much of a given batch of refuse, so say, you know, after lunch, there's some boxes, there's some forks, et cetera, some napkins, how much of that refuse they were going to try to put into the recycle versus the trash, it led to a greater than doubling of successful achievement of that goal. Now that's a perhaps trivial goal to some of you, although let's face it, recycling is important, but that result has been shown again and again and again for different domains of goal setting and pursuit. So this thing of setting specificity, really spending time with it on paper, 
setting specificity of actions of which specific actions, and then setting specificity of how long you are going to gauge in each of those actions each week greatly increases the probability that you will achieve that what previously seemed to be a all too lofty goal. You could simply ask yourself, you know, do I want to do this thing today? And if the answer is yes, well, then it turns out that spending just one to three, maybe five minutes, but even just one minute visualizing the outcome, the positive outcome, of course, and the feeling state that you may have, because of course you don't know, you don't have a uh, time machine, you can't feel yourself into the future, but you can make a good guess as to how you might feel in the future if you accomplish that goal. Spending one to three, maybe five minutes in a sort of meditation, although sort of a visualization is perhaps the better way to describe it. Thinking about that feeling state and the outcome and some of the things that are going to be associated with that outcome turns out to be a great practice to engage in just prior to initiating that day's work toward that goal. However, if you arrive to your practice, meaning you show up to the piano to learn piano or you're sitting down to the table, or maybe you haven't even gotten enough motivation to go toward the piano or toward your notebook or computer or whatever landscape it is that you are going to be uh, pursuing your goal within and you are having, quote unquote, a hard time getting motivated toward that goal, well, then it turns out what the scientific literature tells us is that visualizing the end, keeping the end in mind, positive visualization of all the good things that you'll experience when you achieve that goal is not going to be an effective strategy to motivate you. Rather, if you are not feeling motivated, then what the scientific literature tells us is that you actually want to spend one to three, maybe five minutes visualizing failure, visualizing how terrible you will feel if you do not achieve your goal, visualizing severe consequences, perhaps mostly of the sort like telling yourself, gosh, I set a goal, I set a 12 week block, I quantify it, I know I wanna do this, here I have the time to do it and I'm simply just not doing it. And in that case, you would think, okay, well, you should kind of build yourself up, maybe call a friend, text a friend, get some encouragement. No, the scientific literature tells us that when we are not motivated and it is a goal that we actually want to pursue. And of course, here I'm talking about adaptive goal pursuit, meaning things that are going to enrich your mental health, physical health, et cetera, not things that are going to be detrimental to us. Well, then if you're not feeling motivated, you want to spend one to three, perhaps five minutes meditating, concentrating on what it's going to feel like to fail and the fact that you are not succeeding, but indeed that you are failing. And I know this sounds like rather harsh advice that this protocol uh, sounds like kind of a self-flagellating protocol. It's not intended to be self-flagellation. In fact, it should not be self-flagellation, but rather what you want to do when you are not motivated is to think about failure and what that failure at the end of 12 weeks will feel like. And the reason for that is that the data tell us that when we visualize positive outcomes, yes, it deploys certain neurochemicals in our brain and body that make us feel good. Although frankly, if you've heard that imagining something creates the same neurochemical and neural circuit states in the brain as actually experiencing that thing, that is simply not true. That's a myth. We've talked about this in previous episodes. That's simply not true. But if you are having a hard time getting motivated toward a goal that you actually want to achieve, then spending that short amount of time thinking about how lousy you'll feel when you don't achieve it recruits certain elements of your so-called autonomic nervous system. It creates shifts in the release of things like epinephrine, norepinephrine, even release of the so-called reward molecule, dopamine, which in fact is not the molecule of reward. It is the molecule of motivation and it's associated with pain. It's associated with negative thoughts. And of course, it's associated with positive thoughts and outcomes. But basically what I'm saying is, if you're highly motivated to do something, you're ready to go, spend one to three minutes, maybe five, visualizing the positive outcomes that you're going to experience when you ultimately finish out that 12 week cycle as a consequence of all the great work that you've done. If, however, you are not motivated, you're feeling like, I don't wanna do this thing, I'm procrastinating, I'm just not feeling like doing it. Yes, I wanna achieve the goal, but I just don't feel like doing it. Well, then your task is to take one to three, maybe five minutes and think about how much more lousy you will feel when you do not achieve that goal at the end of 12 weeks. And that 
the data tell us, recruit certain elements of your nervous system, your hormonal system that are more successful in getting you into action, into starting toward your goal than were you to try and build yourself up towards all that positivity. So yes, indeed, there is a place for negative thinking.